Over the last few weeks, while covering the new updates to Helldivers 2, as well as our regular stress tests, I have been playing the living hell out of this game. Having finally crossed the 250 hour threshold, at this point, I have seen and unlocked it all. If Helldivers 2 were to stop existing tomorrow, I'd have still gotten my money's worth several times over. Absolutely amazing game. I used to play the original nigh on 10 years ago, but never expected a sequel intended to quietly play with my friends would become both a cultural phenomenon as well as a vessel to relaunch this channel. It's just a win-win all round. However, as you progressively sink more time into this game and start to play what currently constitutes the end game, that's when some of the cracks around the seams start to form. I've been trying to forewarn about these for quite some time, but due to the huge level of polarization among the community and low quality emotionally charged discourse surrounding the game, it's very difficult to get a sensible nuanced take above the noise. Very recently, I ran a seven and a half hour stream that at some point highlighted and showcased every single issue I've been warning about for weeks. I'll link that for you in the card above in case you want something running in the background as you go about your day. Now, in my belief, we're starting to see the residual effects of this. The player base on Steam has just dropped off by around 20% if we compare the all-time peak to the 24-hour peak. If we're more conservative and compare last Saturday's peak with this Saturday's, bearing in mind that this Saturday has people trying the new war bond for the first time, we see a drop off of 17% week over week. The war bond was not enough to bring people back. Now, of course, this isn't the end of the world. The game is still top three, just behind Dota on the charts, so it's a screaming success. But part of what forms wisdom and insight is not only looking at where things are today, but rather looking at the signs and trying to project where they will be tomorrow. The last two balance changes started a snowball effect that is now gaining momentum. Players were alienated, and now they're starting to leave. I know this viscerally because my regular squad no longer plays, so I'm relegated to public games and also because you guys let me know here in the comments. I have read thousands of these comments and I feel your pain. My squad used to be on all day every day. You couldn't unglue us from the game. Now I essentially have to beg to get a duo game happening. There is a conflux of issues facing Helldivers 2 presently and that's what I want to dig into today because I firmly believe that this is completely avoidable. The reason that Helldivers 2 was such a massive success on its launch is because its gameplay loop was darn near perfect. Yes, there were balancing issues, yes, the spawns got pretty kooky in the higher difficulties, yes, you had to basically avoid combat and despawn to get through difficulty 9, but that's not something that ever changed. One of the rules of testing and balancing is to only ever change one thing at a time. The issue with the first balance pass of Helldivers 2 is that not only did it change multiple things, but it changed all the most popular things negatively. This is immediately going to get players defensive because they hate nerfs to things they grow attached to. But that was only the beginning. On top of the stated changes, we got a whole avalanche of stealth updates, such as buffs to enemy spawn rates and aggression. The game literally became more frustrating to play overnight because not only did the developers ramp up the difficulty, but they hamstrung the tools we were using to manage it at the same time. It was like breaking all the cardinal rules of game balancing at once. This was when I lost my regular squad. They just didn't have the patience to deal with the new aggro enemies, all the while having to learn the new meta to deal with them. They started feeling frustration rather than fun while playing, and as tends to happen when a game you buy for fun is no longer that, they stopped playing. On that note, let's expand on the concept of meta, since it's such a dirty word to so many in the community. Meta is an acronym that stands for Most Effective Tactics Available. With that out of the way, there is always a meta. For everything, not just games. There is meta for scaling companies. There is meta for becoming a bodybuilder. There is a meta for success in dating. Meta never goes away, it simply just changes. So what the initial update did was take a functional meta, break it, then replace it with another that was more laborious to use. The two shots to the leg with the railgun followed by the primary to take down charges was replaced by just melting the leg with the flamethrower instead. Kill time was around the same, if not even faster, yet there were less steps involved and the process was just more boring. The railgun melting hulks was just replaced by the anti-material rifle melting hulks. The railgun melting striders front on was just replaced by the scorcher melting striders front on. 
As of the recent update with the addition of the Stun Grenade, we now have a meta that trivializes charges, Bile Titans, and Hulks more than the original Railgun plus Energy Shield meta ever did. This begs the question, why the nerfs at all? If we were simply going to buff other things to bring them to that level of efficacy, why did the original tools need to get hamstrung? Players would have been much more receptive to simply being given a viable flamethrower, recallless rifle, EAT, and spear alongside what they were already using. To add to this, we had a developer add fuel to this fire by implying that players were using the original meta as a crutch, and to get better. All the while we saw the dev team get obliterated trying to complete a difficulty 6 mission with Operator Drewski. So it appears that they were balancing the game based on spreadsheet readouts on completion rates rather than playing their actual game. One of the arguments was, people are still clearing Helldives. Well, yeah, of course they are. Helldivers 2 isn't a particularly challenging game, irrespective of difficulty. If you've ever sim raced, flight simmed, or played 90s tournament shooters, this game is a breeze. You can see me clear a Helldive as part of the aforementioned stream without breaking a sweat. The issue isn't that people are clearing it, it's how they're clearing it, and what the experience is like. The devil is in the details. Is it fun is the operative question. The problem, and again you can see this in my stream, is that the difficulty levels are so spiky based on RNG and mission type that the difficulty levels have no meaning. In the same stream where I cakewalked a hell dive without breaking a sweat, I endured a difficulty 5 holdout mission that was several orders of magnitude more difficult than the hell dive. How does that make any sense? The game is completely out of balance with itself. It's like playing roulette and not knowing whether you're going to win the pot or lose your ass. This was exacerbated even further with the recent tweak to spawn rates which was supposedly going to reduce heavies and instead buff chaff enemies. The net effect of this created plagues of hunters that are able to leap on top of players from dozens of meters away and functionally two-shot them before they can even react. Because armor rating doesn't affect headshots, even heavy armor isn't a defense against this. On the automaton side, we now have squads of rocket devastators and troopers roaming the countryside, all able to one-shot players. It took a game that was out of balance and just added a multiplier to the chaos. I've created videos showing that the reduction in heavy spawn rates very much can't be felt at all in some mission types, yet people continue to conjure reasons not to believe their own eyes and justify either poorly explained or outright broken gameplay loops. This kind of attitude will murder the game in the long term. Closing our eyes, yelling, I'm not listening, and ignoring the basic reality before us is not going to help anyone. So. Looping back around, we can clearly see why this is now finally being reflected in the player count. I'm convinced if this trajectory continues, the game will see an ongoing player exodus. We can revisit this video in a few months and see whether I'm right or wrong. Ultimately, I want to see Helldivers 2 succeed long term. All the leaks are making it apparent that they have a robust vision for the game as a live service. I want to be there enjoying it, chomping at the bit for the new Warbond every second Thursday of the month. I want them to crush it, and I want to see them exceed the all-time player peak, rather than live in its shadow for years. The only way to do that is to start gameplay balancing to optimize for fun, rather than to make the spreadsheets look nice. Subscribe for more videos on the state of Helldivers, not to mention our regular weapon stress tests, and I'll see you next time.